let's look at the equations that relate to capacitors. And I'm going to give some intuition on those equations and answer questions such as what is capacitance? And what does it mean to have a bigger capacitor? So a capacitor is formed by having parallel metal plates. And I've drawn those two here in this diagram. And we're going to have wires that connect those plates to other parts of a circuit. Now to understand the equations, I'm going to start by connecting one of those plates to the negative terminal of a battery. So here we've got a battery and it's got a negative terminal and a positive terminal. And that is because there's a chemical reaction in that battery, which is putting more electrons at this end. So let's think about what happens when we connect that end to this plate. So this excess of electrons here will cause an electron flow, a momentary electron flow along this wire and electrons will start prop, uh, propagating onto this plate. Now they'll get there until they get to equilibrium because if too many go onto the plate, then they're going to start pushing back the other way. So we're going to get a distribution of electrons building up on this plate up to an equilibrium. And these equations relate this amount of charge. So the total amount of charge on this plate, we're going to call capital Q. And the battery has a voltage, which is V. So we're going to look at how the relationship is between the charge and the voltage. Now let's think what's going to happen if we now connect the positive plate to the positive end of the battery. Well, in that case, then some of the electrons in the wire will be drawn into the battery and some of them will be drawn off the positive plate uh, and therefore we'll get an excess of positives or a lack of electrons. I prefer to think of that as a lack of electrons uh, on the positive plate. Again, until there's equilibrium, because it's important to always remember with a capacitor, no electrons flow across this gap. That's a very important thing. They build up on my plate, but they don't flow across the gap. OK, so what's one thing we, we can realize about that is that that positives here will draw a few more electrons onto the negative plate. So the charge on the negative plate will go up more when you connect the positive terminal. Um, and it's important to think about these field lines across between the plates and the for electrostatic forces that are acting on the electrons. So in terms of the equations, let's think of some of the parameters that affect this. Well, if the plates were bigger, then you would have more electrons on the plate because there would be there would be more surface area for the electrons to fill at the same density and the density given by the forces that are coming from the top plate and the push from the battery. So it turns out this is a linear relationship. So we've got that the charge, and we're building up this equation here, so the charge turns out it's linear with the voltage. It's also linear with the area. So if you put two capacitors in parallel, you would have twice the area of the plates, and then you would have twice the amount of charge which goes onto those plates. Uh, another thing to be thinking about is the distance between the plates. And what we find, and you, I think you can intuitively see this, that if we move the plates closer together, then the, ch the positive charge, the, the lack of electrons or the positive uh, on the electromagnetics on the top of the plate, on the top plate, will be closer to the bottom. And therefore, the force will be greater and more electrons will be drawn onto the bottom plate. So therefore, it's inverse with distance. Again, it's, it turns out that it's linear. So if you make the distance smaller, the charge increases. So that's why the, the distance between the plates is on the bottom of this equation. And there turns out there's another parameter in terms of the proportionality constant, and that is something called perme permeativity. And we call that little epsilon. I'll talk about a bit more about that in a minute. So here we have the equation, the main equation. Now, often you see this written in a different form, in a rearranged form in terms of voltage, where voltage equals Q divided by A epsilon times distance. And this is often the way that it's shown. You might see this in textbooks. I prefer to think of it in this way here because the voltage is an input to this equation. It governs how much charge comes onto this plate. 
So this way of writing the equation is an input-output relationship, and I much prefer this in terms of intuitively understanding what's happening inside a capacitor. Uh, this way also gives us a way of writing it in terms of what this term is that we call capacitance. So this term here, area times permeativity divided by distance, we call that capacitance. And that is the capacitance when you see a capacitor and it's got a certain uh, amount of Faraday's, that is what it's talking about. Now we've seen the relationship between the area and the distance, but what's this thing permeativity to get the last term in this equation? Well, let me just look inside this capacitor a little bit more, and I'm just going to draw a more zoomed in version of it. So if we have those two plates, and if we put a material between those plates, and that material then is going to have something which we call permeativity. And in there, it's a material, a solid material, and the the atoms in that material are able to be polarized. And when the voltage is applied, these uh, charges align. You can think of them as like small, um, like it could be uh, atoms at, a, at an atomic level. Uh, you can, I, if I'm drawing all these sort of atoms here, they're all being polarized so that they have a positive at the bottom and a negative at the top. And they all align inside this electric field. They all align like this if they are a dielectric with the uh, properties that we're looking for. So we've now got these almost like small magnets. You can think of these as very small magnets inside this dielectric. And what it means is because they're all polarized and because they all become aligned, we can see intuitively there's a closer distance now between a uniform positive set of charges and this negative charges on this plate. So it's effectively the same as reducing the distance. And if you have more permeativity, you have more possibility for alignment in the type of material, more prone to alignment, then you have a higher number of charges because they, they align more, they polarize, they align more, and then there's these more positive charges closer to the negative plate with a, a bigger force pulling in more electrons, pulling in more charge. And that's why the epsilon here is on the top. So now we have the static equations. Let's think about the dynamic equations. So clearly we can see from this formula here that if we change the voltage, then we change the charge. And the proportionality is the capacitance. So if we do a small change in the charge, and we write this in terms of calculus, then we get dq dt, this is the change in charge with respect to time. So that actually equals the current, and that is going to equal directly from the equation here, the change in the voltage with respect to time. So this is the main equation that governs the dynamics of the relationship. So if you have a changing voltage, if you apply not a constant uh, voltage like this here with this battery, but if you had an alternating current, then you would have the voltage continually changing with time. And this will equation tells you what the current is doing as a function of time, when the voltage changes as a function of time. And these are the static equations here. So again, this is the one I prefer to think about uh, as more intuitive. Uh, this one here shows you, if we just think about this one for a minute, um, if you change the voltage at a constant rate, then the current will be a constant. It's the change of charge, of course. Uh, it's always a good idea, I think, to think back to charges not just voltages and currents, think about charge. It always helps when understanding capacitors. So hopefully this video has given you more insights into capacitors and the equations. If it has, please like the video. It helps others to find it. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And we've got more videos coming on capacitors and electric circuits. And of course, check out the web page in the description below. You'll find a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.